Hi everyone, it's time for Monday Musings again, and uh, today I want to share with you something that was really fun and really fast. Um, this is a flat rock that my girlfriend of many, many years, Sylvia Ward, brought back to me from her trip to North Carolina, and I wasn't sure what I wanted to paint on it, so I thought about it for a while, and then I found um, something like this that was on a blog, and I really, really wish that I could remember the blog I found it on. If I can find it again, I'll include it in the text, so I'm really sorry that I uh, didn't write that down. So anyway, um, this is really fast. It took me less than an hour to do, and I want to share it with you, and we'll just do the other side of the rock. Now, I had started this video once already, and I'd sealed the side of the rock, and then my battery ran down. But So what I did was I used primer sealer from Deco Art. You can use any sealer that you want. And I brushed it on and then I heat dried it, but then since um, I had to to uh, recharge my camera battery, then I uh, just left it there and now it's all um, cooled off and it's dried. So, but I did dry it with my heat gun and you can, if you're doing a lot of these, you can just seal them all and then let them dry overnight or for a few hours or you can use your heat gun. So the n next thing that I did was I used chalky finish paint and I used it in lace. This is just barely an off white. And it's more like a, a warm white maybe, it would, you could call it. So um, I'm going to get my sponge applicator. These are just really cheap. And you can buy 10 or 20 at a time for a couple of dollars. And so I use, like to use these when I'm doing three-dimensional projects. So I put this paint on and I used a lot of coats because I wanted a very, very opaque look. And you know this rock is dark so it took a few coats. I actually used five coats on the other side. Now this is just one rock and it doesn't use up very much paint so I really don't mind using all of the you know five coats of chalk paint. But again if you're doing a lot of them then you might want to put a coat of gesso down first. Maybe even a couple of coats. And what I did was I dried it between coats. Only takes a few seconds to dry. And then applied my next coat. probably could have stopped at four, but I put one more on just for good measure. Now see, I'm not using much paint, but if you're doing a lot of these, then you're not going to want to use up all your chalky paint on five coats. Even with this many coats of paint, it doesn't take very long at all to accomplish this. And again, if you're making a lot of them, you could paint your, you, know, you could seal in an assembly line, and then you could paint all your base coats in an assembly line. And maybe by the time you get back to the first one, it's pretty dry and you only have to barely hit it with the your heat gun. Okay, this is coat three. You want to be careful not to burn your fingers. The rock can get quite hot.
and each time that I use my heat gun to dry and seal the previous coat, the coats underneath get uh, more, even more of a, cur of a cure. Okay, coat number four. Now you could stop here. I'm going to go for the one more coat, the fifth coat, so that I can really, really get that solid base. My goal is to make this look like porcelain, like a chunk of porcelain. So there's my fifth coat. And We'll dry that. And then we'll get on with our image transfer, which is such a fun part to do. You want to make absolutely certain that you are dry. You could let this dry for an hour or two overnight or you can just hit it with your heat gun and make sure that you do it long enough to get everything dry from underneath. Now this rock, one of the tests for if your paint is dry is to put it up against your cheek or your, the back of your hand and if, you, if it feels cold it isn't dry. But this is a little bit difficult because the rock heats up. So you can't really do that test. You just have to trust your sense of feel and be patient to where you put your heat on it long enough to get it dry through and through. Again, the fact that the rock is porous um, it's to your advantage now, even though we put a sealer on it, um, this rock heats up, so our heat is really going all through the rock, so the whole thing is warm. Okay, so that's really pretty opaque. So now I'm going to come to my, my image and I'm going to come and use the media, the image transfer medium by DecoArt. It's the first I've used this. It's new to me, but I've used, um, oh, I've used decoupage, I've used traditions faux finish medium, I've used um, lots of different things over the years. Uh, Aileen's has a, a image transfer photo transfer medium and I think um, Mod Podge does too as well but I'm really liking this because it's fast and it's thorough so the first thing I'm going to do this is still pretty warm but I believe it's okay uh, it was warm when I did it on the other side so I'm going to do it I'm going to brush a coat of the media medium of the image transfer medium on my surface, get a pretty good coat of it, and I'm also going to brush that on the front of my picture that I want to transfer to get it pretty wet. Okay, now I'm going to place it upside down on my surface.
make sure that you place it where where you want it. Oh, <laughs> my bee uh, came off, so let me just place. Okay, you want to make sure that you get all your bubbles out. And if you feel like you need a little more, go ahead and brush a little more under there. But you want to make sure you've got enough to stick it down. Okay, I'm going to put a little bit more on the front of my bee. It's kind of dried up. I'm going to put my B right here in the center. I'm going to use my sponge to make sure that it's all down and in contact with the surface so that I don't have bubbles or wrinkles. Then it says to let it dry for two hours. Well, you know, we don't have time to do that on the video. So I get my heat gun out again and dry it. Oh, also, before we do that, you want to use your sponge and make sure that you um, remove any excess medium that you're not using. Okay, so kind of clean that off, and now I'm going to dry it. Again, spend a little bit of time, spend a, a full minute drying, or a full two or three minutes if you have a large surface that you're um, transferring. This step is very important, it needs to be dry. Okay, the next step is to sponge some water on top of your image, get it pretty wet, and then let that sit for two to five minutes. Okay because what that's doing is permeating your water. I'm sorry, I said permeating your water. It's permeating your image, the paper on the back of your image, and it's wetting that paper so that it's going to let loose of its ink. So I'm going to let this sit for a minute, and I'll talk to you about the things that I'm going to use next. I'm going to put this lid on my image transfer. And you see that this um, pot is going to go pretty far. You know, of course, this is a very small image, and I only used a tiny little bit. But uh, you should be able to get some, to transfer some pretty large images onto furniture with this nice um, jar as well. It is eight fluid ounces. And the varnish that I'm going to use, instead of cream wax this time, I decided to use um, DecoArt's Chalky Finish. Um, soft, well, it's not Chalky Finish, but it's sold with the Chalky Finish paints. It's a soft touch varnish. 
and it's about kind of like a satin finish and you put on several coats and you want to um, do this with a f with foam a foam brush and you want it to let it dry a minimum of a one to two hours before you uh, put additional coats on but again we can use the uh, heat gun for our purposes in this video so I'm using that but then I also wanted to go one step further and because I wanted this to look like porcelain and at the end I uh, applied texture glass and uh, one thing I want to um, to also caution you is make sure that you're completely dry before you do this texture glass step. Um, I went ahead and did it so that I could show you for the um, the video but this one spot right here was not completely dry and so I have a bubble effect right here with my texture glass. So you when you know you can finish your image transfer but I want you to um, be aware that before you add the texture glass part make sure that it's all the way dry. Mostly I was dry but there's a part here and there's a little area right there where I wasn't dry and so I want to caution you for that. So um, let a, we've let a minute or two go by and I'm going to wet it again and you just keep adding water until you get all of your paper off but I'm going to go ahead now and start rubbing the paper off with using my sponge and you see the image begin to appear as we rub the paper off. Look how quickly this paper comes off with this transfer medium. That was what was so difficult for me uh, with the decoupage and some other uh, mediums is that it took just a long time and a whole lot of elbow work to get that paper off. But with this uh, deco art transfer medium it just comes off just so quickly. And of course it helps when you trim it so closely. So it's starting to dry so I'm just going to wet my sponge again and work, work some more of it off. And here's your image coming so quickly. And you're just going to take and, and use your finger and rub that paper off. And when it gets too dry to get any more paper off, then you just take your sponge and you add some more water. You need to continue until you have rubbed all of the paper off. Here and there, some of my image has rubbed off as well, but you know, that's not right, like right here and right there. But that is probably because I chose to heat dry it instead of leaving it sit for a couple of hours. But that doesn't really bother me because I don't mind it being, uh, you know, having little uh, misses and, and tears in it here and there because to me that just shows that uh, it's it's worn you know, that, to me that makes it more vintage and I like that I, that look so that doesn't bother me at all and that's really all there is to it my, my towel is wet let me get a drier one So now, instead of making the mistake that I made over here, I'm going to let this dry before I varnish it, and then I'm going to add the uh, glass, the texture glass medium onto it after it's dried several hours. And I'll have a picture of that for you. So thanks for hanging out with me on Monday Musings, and we'll find some rocks and, and make some cool paperweights and some cool gifts.
Have a good week. Bye.